In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install a virtual instance of Windows 7 that will run inside a virtual box on your Windows computer. The reason you might want to do this is because in the class there may be some assignments where you are asked to make changes to your computer and perhaps you don't want to make those changes to your actual computer, to your host computer. Maybe you can't make those changes to your host computer. And so by running a virtual box or having Windows running in a virtual machine environment like that, then you'll be able to make those changes there and be able to complete the assignments. Now, there's a wonderful way that we can do this through a service on the web that's called modern.ie. The purpose of this website is to provide an operating system of Windows that's running different versions of Internet Explorer. And this site is intended for web developers so that developers of websites will be able to test the code that they've written with the different versions of the Internet Explorer browser. But we can use it in this class also for the purpose of running our test with the operating system. So we're going to come to the website which is modern dot IE and then forward slash EN hyphen US forward slash virtualization hyphen tools. And when you come here you just need to scroll down just a bit here to where it says download a virtual machine and you can actually do this on Mac, Linux, or Windows. But in this video we're going to watch the one on Windows. So we'll click here to get the free virtual manager and we're going to select the desired testing operating system. Now this is the host and you have to decide if you're putting this on a Windows, Mac, or Linux and of course we're putting it on a Windows computer. So we select Windows as the host and here we'll see the different platforms that we can use for our virtual environment. We could use VMware, we could use VirtualBox, we could use Virtual PC, or we could use Hyper-V. But we're going to be using VirtualBox and so we'll select the option VirtualBox on Windows. Now we scroll down and we'll see here that we have several options. Remember again the purpose of this website is to provide users with different versions of the Internet Explorer browser. And so here somebody could download XP and run IE6 or XP and run IE8 or we could use Windows 7 with IE8, Vista with IE7. But what we're going to do for this video is we're going to download Windows 7 with IE10. And what you'll see here are several files. The first one you can pretty much ignore. We're not going to worry with that one. The exe file followed by these four RAR files, you'll need to download each of them. And to do that, you'll simply right click on the file and then save link as and then save it to some folder on your computer where you'll remember and be able to go because we'll need to run some tests on these after they're downloaded. It may take you a while to download these and so I've done that in advance of this video so I'll show you. But again just right click on each one and select save link as. Now after you have them downloaded you'll have them all here in a file. You, you want to make sure that you have all five of these files and then what we need to do is to before we execute these files we need to make sure that these files are complete. That file that we downloaded is the actual file that was on the server and that somehow the integrity of the file wasn't lost in the download. In other words, we didn't get part of the download. We got all of the download and that maybe something like a virus attaching itself hasn't happened. Now the way we do that, very simple, we're going to come here to the Win7 IE10. We're going to, for each of these files, we're going to click the MD5 hash, click on that, and then here you'll see the little short hash. You'll just simply highlight that hash, Control C to copy, Come back to your file and remember this one is for the exe file so we're going to right click on the file and come down to properties and then for file hashes this is using hash tab you see we get the green check mark tells us that it's good now the reason it was able to do that was because when we copied the hash 
into system memory, then the hash tab was able to run its own hash and to compare it with the hash that I had in memory. And then it says that they agree and my file is good. Cancel that and move this so back here and we're going to do the second file. MD5, left click on it. We're going to highlight the hash, control C. We're going to come to the second file, right click, properties, file hashes, and it tells me that it's good. Now you'll need to repeat that process for all five of these files. I'm not going to take the time here, but you be sure and do that for all five of your files. Now there's one other thing that we need to grab here from the website Modern IE before we leave it. We're going to come down and here at the bottom there is a link that says download detailed requirements and instructions here. So we're going to click that. It's going to open a PDF file. I encourage you to download this file to your computer and save it because it contains some information that we'll need later. For instance, if we come down to page three, we're going to see some instructions in this area about how to extract the files that we've downloaded and downloaded and install them. Just a little bit below that, we see some usage instructions and it tells us here on this third bullet item that for Windows 7 images that we should allocate anywhere from one to two gigabytes. So it'd be 1024 all the way up to 2048 megabytes of RAM memory in our virtual machine for that Windows 7 to run. So either one or two gigabytes of RAM. And you come down to page four, and here you see the username and password for the administrator. And you'll need this if you have to do anything in your installation of Windows 7 where you are required to use the admin username and password. All right, so following these instructions here under extraction instructions, it tells us simply to come back to our downloads and find your file that ends with the .exe file extension. And we're going to simply execute that. So I'm going to double click it. It's going to run an extraction process on those RAR files. When the extraction process is complete, you'll see that a new file has been added here to the area where you downloaded those files. And it's a file that ends with .ova and that's the file that we're most interested in. Now, we already have VirtualBox installed. I'll show you my instance of it here. So here's VirtualBox. I already have Windows 7 from a previous installation that I did. And here is Backtrack Linux. And what we want to do is just add a third one. You can, you can add as many here as you want. So I'm going to come back here to my OVA file, select it, double click it. And then I get a window here that comes up and it tells me that VirtualBox is going to now import this virtual appliance. That's what the OVA file is. It is a virtual appliance. And we're just going to, for now, go ahead and click Import. When the extraction process is complete, then you'll see the new virtual machine running here in VirtualBox. In this case, mine's identified as IE10 hyphen Win7. Now, there's a couple things I need to do to this machine before it's ready to go. I need to come to Settings. I want to come to System. I'm going to increase the memory from, remember the instruction said to give it one gigabyte or two gigabytes. And this is, of course, going to depend upon how much memory you have available on your host computer. Now in the computer I'm using I have 16 gigs of RAM so I have plenty to, to go. I'm just going to go ahead then and give it the full 2048 that the instructions called for. I'm going to uncheck the floppy disk since my computer doesn't have one. I'm just going to use the down arrow to move that out of the way. Make it run a little bit more efficiently. And then I'll come to display under display, I want to give it as much video memory as I can. So I'm going to go run it up to 128. And then I'll come to network. And we want to make sure that we've, and these are the default settings, so it should be there for you. But make sure that you have checked here, enable network adapter. 
and that it is set here first of all as NAT. We want it to be a NATed one. We can actually add other network adapters and connect the different virtual machines together. We could have a little network here on our own host computer by just adding network adapters and linking the different virtual machines together. But that's beyond the scope of this class and you can find other instructions on the web on how to do that. And that's really all we need to do at this point. So we'll click OK. And here is IE7. So we'll click on Start. And here you see your instance now of Windows 7 running on this computer. You may get a message that comes up that tells you that the VirtualBox Guest Editions update is available. We'll need to take care of that in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. The home network, just check that and then close. To get the Guest Host Editions installed, we come up to Devices on our VirtualBox and come down to Install Guest Editions. Click it. We'll select Run. Yes. Next. Next. Install. It's going to want us to reboot our virtual machine and so I'm going to click Finish and let this reboot and then we'll come back in just a moment. After you reboot, there's one last thing you'll need to do. We're going to come to Internet Explorer Browser we need to go to microsoft.com forward slash security and here at the Microsoft Security Center we simply want to get the Microsoft Security Essentials so click it and select the download button the message at the bottom of your screen in the IE browser will ask you to save or run and since this is a direct link into Microsoft I just select run click yes Click Next. You'll need to accept the agreement. I'm going to select I don't want to join since this is a very temporary installation. Click Next. And leave both of these checked and it will fix your firewall settings. And Then click to install. It's installed and I'm going to leave it checked here to scan my computer. So I'll click Finish. Then I'll just close the browser. The first thing it will do will be to update the virus definitions and then it will run a scan of the Windows 7 installation that you've just placed in your virtual box. So this is not going to scan your entire host computer. It's only going to scan for Windows 7 in virtual box. When the virus scan is complete, then you're done. You can close the security essentials. You can use this instance of Windows the same way that you'd use any windows installed on any computer so you come to your start button you come to your control panel there's your control panel you have everything here that you need if you want to make screenshots since you don't have office installed one thing you can do here is just type wordpad wordpad is sort of like word it comes in installed by default on all windows systems so you can use this just like your word processor and type in here, paste in any screenshots that you have and use this as a way to submit your assignments.